Hello folks. So in this video, I want to look at adding in some more animations because at the moment all I've got is idle and attack, but I also want to add an animation for taking damage and also finally for when the players or the fighters die. So that's going to be quite straightforward. If I just come back all the way to my fighter class, if you remember the way I set it all up was that I have this master animation list and then I just go in and create temporary list into which I load the particular animation that I want. So I loaded in my idle animations into this temporary list. And then at the end of that state, that for loop, I put them into my overall animation list. And I did the exact same thing with attack. So that suggests that it's quite easy to just keep adding more and more this way. So what I'll do first is I'll add an animation for when somebody takes damage. So a hurt animation. So I'll come underneath here where I've got my uh, attack animation and just underneath that there's a line for self dot animation list append this temporary list so this happens at the end of each of these four statements or these four loops sorry so now i could just copy this entire section down so that's one two three four five six seven lines copy these down and just change this to instead of attack change this to hurt so now i'm going to load in the hurt images now the code starts off exactly the same i create a temporary list first of all and then i iterate through to get all my images. However, in this case, the heart animation is quite a quick one. So there's not actually that many images. I changed that to three. So it goes zero, one, two, and that's how many pictures I've got for the heart animation. Uh, the code here starts off the same, but I need to change this folder to heart so that it goes into the correct directory. The number stays the same because it's going to be pulling it from this for loop. And then afterwards, it's going to scale it. So that's all correct. And then lastly, it will update the temporary list with the images just loaded. So at the end of this for loop, I should have a new temporary list, which has all of these hurt images. So then I add them into my overall animation list. So now this means that this animation list has index zero, one, and two. And I can access those indices, if you remember, using this self.action variable. So zero is idle, one is attack, and two that I've just added is hurt. So that's it. That's the animation loaded into memory. If I run this code again, nothing changes but we know that it's executed fine and that means it's loaded all of this in. So I need to be able to call this animation whenever there's an attack that's been uh, targeted at one of the enemies. And to keep things consistent, uh, if you know, I've noticed I've got this idle method here and then an attack method, which so far correspond to the animations as well. Well, I can do the exact same thing and just continue this down below. So I can copy the idle method because that's kind of straightforward, it's quite short. And I can put that underneath my attack method. So now I've got idle, attack, and then this one is just going to be hurt. So we change that to hurt. And then I say set variables to hurt animation. Actually, that means that I have got this wrong. I need to change this comment here to say idle animation. So there's a little typo there. So the hurt method, set variables to the hurt animation. Now, as I said, the action is what controls the animation sequence that I'm about to run. So the action for hurt was two. That means that it accesses index two within the overall animation list. The rest stays the same. I reset the index back to zero and I take a little snapshot of what time it is now so that I know how much to wait or how long to wait before I need to update this. So that means that the heart method exists, but I need to call it at some point. So the best point to call it is whenever I attack somebody. So this attack method, if you remember, has a target. And so the target is what takes the damage uh, and there's a check for whether the, the target has died. Well, just underneath here, where I've got this target HP is reduced by the amount of damage, I can also run the method for uh, their hurt animation. So I'll add a comment here to say run enemy hurt animation, and I just say target dot hurt. So if I run this code again, this should allow me to run the animation. So anytime there's an attack, you'll notice that the opposing player, so the target, gets that hurt animation against them. So that's it. It was fairly straightforward and it's working pretty smoothly. So now I can just do the exact same thing and I can add in the death animation. So I come back up to my uh, constructor. Uh, so I've got my idle images, my attack images. Well, for hurt images, I just copy this down again. So remember to include this section when you're copying this self animation list as well. So you copy that down and just change that from hurt to death. So now the code again starts off the same, but within the death animation, there's quite a few images. So actually it's, it's the longest animation I've got. So I changed that to 10 and then we need to update this 
directory here to death and everything else stays the same so we scale it append it to the temporary list and then at the end of it when i've got 10 images within this list i have this self animation dot list append so i put that in and this now goes into the third index so zero is idle one is attack two is hurt and then three is going to be death so if we come up here that ties in with what i've got with the actions three is dead so when do I run this animation? Well, again, exactly the same thing. I come back down to my attack method. I'm currently doing, uh, currently running this section of code, which is target.hurt. So that runs the hurt animation. But then I've got a check underneath here to see if the target has died. So if their health has dropped below one, then I set it to one and I set their uh, alive variable to false. Well, at this exact same time, I can also run their death animation. I can say target.death. And this should be enough to run that animation and to trigger it. There will be one problem with it, but I'll demonstrate it first and then fix it afterwards. So let's see if I can actually kill one of these guys. He's going to heal first. I should have maybe disabled potions just for a little bit. Okay, I think it's possible I might die first, but that's okay. That will run my death animation instead. Uh, except I got an error instead. Fighter object has no attribute death. And that's because I've overlooked something very straightforward. I've forgotten to add the death method. So I'm calling it here, but I haven't actually created it yet. So that's quite easy. We just copy this hurt method down and then add in, change it to death. Change this comment also to death. And the only thing that changes is this action. So self action becomes three. Okay, so if I run this code now, but before I do, I'm just going to lower the health of these guys so that I can kill them quicker. So we just set him to two, run this again, and as soon as I hit him, he should die. And there you go, it runs the animation, but no, he just jumps straight back up. So they die, and then they just come straight back up again. And the reason for that is, if we come back up to where I've got my, uh, my animation sequence within my update method, basically what I'm saying is, if the animation is run out, then we reset back to the start. So once any of the animation sequences finishes, we just go back into the idle mode. But I don't really want that to happen when they've died. I only want that to happen if they've attacked or if they've taken damage. At the end of it, they go back to idle. But if they're dead, I want them to stay dead. So I can fix that quite easily. I just need to add a little check before I jump into the idle. So up here, first of all, I say if self.action equals 3, which means that uh, the target has died, well then we don't want to reset. So what we actually want is just to stay on the very last frame of the animation, which is when they've died and they're just lying down on the ground. So I'm just going to set that index, because remember this self.frame index is what controls the frame within the animation that I'm at. So if self, we just set the self.frame index to the very last frame of the animation, which is going to be the last instance or the last index within the list. So we just check the length. We say, how long is this animation, first of all? Just copy that in here. So we take the overall length of it, uh, and then we take away one. So that's going to give me the final frame in that animation. But then, of course, if the action is not three, then I still want to switch to idle at the end of it. So now let's run that again. And I'll kill this guy. And now he stays down. And I attack this guy, and he also stays down. Of course, I can keep killing them for now because I haven't added in the checks for it. But notice that the animation is finishing and it stops there. So the animations are all working fine. But I want to address this little issue here that when I kill one of the bandits, I can keep killing them. I can keep attacking that bandit. I don't really want that to be an option. Uh, and the easy fix for this is if we go back down to the main game loop. So remember, I had two different sections. This first section up here is where I'm looking for the actions. And then this section is where I am executing those actions. So when I come back up here to where I'm looking for them, I just want to make sure that when I pick a target, the target is actually alive to start with. So here, if you remember, I'm iterating through all of the bandits within the list. Then I'm looking for whether the mouse is over them. And then I change the mouse to the, the little sword icon. And then lastly, I say if I've clicked the mouse as well, as well as being over it, one of the uh, bandits, then I set the attack to true and I pick him as the target. But what I want to do here is add another condition. So if clicked equals true is correct, I want that to stay. 
but I also want to be able to check whether that bandit is actually alive. There's no point in making that bandit a target if they've already died. So we just say and bandit dot alive equals true. Only in that case do we want to set the target to that bandit. Otherwise, this section is not going to execute and I can continue moving the mouse and click on someone else. So let's try that again. I'll click on this bandit. So that one's dead. And now it's my turn again. But now I can't click on that one anymore. I can click as much as I want, but nothing happens. I can click on the other one and kill him instead. So that's it. Both bandits are dead. Okay, so if you guys found that video useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.